Hi everyone. This video is to show you how I use my Goodreader app for cross stitching. For those of you that have been waiting for this app, I'm very sorry it's taken me so long. I had quite a few issues in uploading it. Uh, something went wrong each time and um, yeah, so here we go. Let's try again. First of all, I'll show you what the app looks like from the app store because there's a few variants. Uh, this is it here. It's called Goodreader for iPad. This app cost me $6.49 Australian dollars. I'm not sure what it costs in other parts of the world. It is only available for iPad, unfortunately. So hopefully they will come out with an Android version at some stage. So I will just click on that to open it. Now this is quite an extensive app. There are a lot of options on here. I haven't explored it fully. So I'm going to do my best to show you what I have discovered. Um, I might look a little bit clumsy because I'm still very new to it, so please excuse me. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is where the help button is because whenever you get a new app, it's always uh, helpful to read the instructions. So the help app is down the bottom here with the question mark. Quite a few um, topics in here to read and I highly suggest that you give those a read before attempting the app. So we'll get out of there. Uh, I'll just briefly show you what you can see on the screen. On the left hand side are files that I have created. When you start the app, um, none of these will be here. I, when I put files on here, they actually go on the left hand side looking like this. But then I have created files at the top to place them into. So I'll show you how to do that in a moment. On the right hand side is your menu options. Across the top we have a search function. If you have trouble finding something that you have um, on your app you can just type in the title and it will find it for you. Uh, this button here shows the recently read or recently added files. The next button is the star and this enables you to add a star to um, any of your files or charts on the left. As you can see, I already have three. These are my current whips. You can change the stars to any color that you like and you can easily add stars or remove stars. The next button, the world. From here, you can browse the web or enter a URL address um, where you will find your you know, if you know the address of where you can find your charts to instantly download them. Um, it also shows you what you've recently downloaded and any service that you have added. I'll go back to that in a minute. And the last one is your tools button, which is probably my most used section. From here, you can make changes to your folders. You can move charts around between folders and uh, delete files and things like that. Um, I'll just click on one as an example. You can copy it, move it, rename it, upload it um, to your server, um, create a new folder, delete it, lots of add, add the star, lots of things on there. Okay, so adding charts to the app. There are various ways to do this. Um, I personally use Dropbox. As you can see here, if you haven't heard of Dropbox before, I highly recommend it. It's an online site where you can, where it stores your files and photographs. So it's a completely free site. Um, I love it because if something was to ever happen to my computer, I know that Dropbox retains all the information I have saved on there. You have the option of sharing um, certain pages of your Dropbox to um, others, obviously I would only recommend that for photos, not for cross-stitch files because it is illegal to share them. Um, other ways to add charts are using the web browse and the URL. So basically how I use my Dropbox is when I purchase a chart, for example Heaven and Earth Designs, I say I do it on my computer and I save it to my computer and then I go into my Dropbox, I log in, and then I upload the chart to Dropbox. 
when I bought this app, I had to connect it to Dropbox because it doesn't know what servers you have. So all the instructions are in the help button down here. So I add a Dropbox. And then when I want to upload from Dropbox, or sorry, when I want to download from Dropbox onto my app, I just click on this, select the file, and it's done within seconds and it's on here. Really, really easy. The other way, um, as I said, you can browse the internet. So you can, you can either do it through here or you can just do it through your, um, your web browser on your iPad. That will also give you a little option to add it to Goodreader because it, it uh, recognizes the fact that you have the app on, on your um, device. Okay, so I'm going to show you how the URL works. So you just click on that there. And if you know the address of where your free chart is, you can just enter it in this box and it'll automatically download it for you. So I'll enter in the address. Okay, as you can see the downloads tab there is working away and if we scroll across here you can see it downloading. So we'll just wait a little bit longer for that to finish. It's actually saving the chart. And that's finished. So then you just click on that there and it comes up here as a file. And I can show you this because it's a free chart. So that's the file I've just downloaded. So to save that now to um, the back page, uh, the main page, whoops, let's go to the tools button, select the file, and then we'll say move. And I need to select which folder I want it to go into. It automatically comes up with the last folder I used. So we'll go down to free primitive hair charts and then move one item here. You can create a new folder within that folder if you like. It already exists. See, I did it earlier just to test it out. So it's already there. So I'm going to delete this now. I'll show you how that's done. Obviously in the tools option there, select manage files, select it, delete, and delete. Done. And back to the little house to go back to the main menu. Okay, so that's uh, it's pretty easy on how to um, get the charts actually on the app. The next thing I'll show you is how to create a new file obviously in the tools option, new folder. Need to give it a, a name, so we'll just call it new. Okay, automatically goes in there. The number next to the brackets tells you how many files you have within that file. Obviously it's zero because I've only just added it. And then we'll move a file into there. So um, we'll move my new heaven and earth um, chart into there. So we click on manage files, select the chart, move, we'll go back, select our, actually I'm not going to put it into the new one, I'm going to put it into my heaven and earth charts file, which is where it belongs, and we'll move it there. And then select done. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Um, Next I'll show you what the actual charts look like on the app because that's what you all want to see. Uh, to get around the copyright issue, I'm going to only show you the free charts, so there's no problem. And we'll click on this one. Now, if any of you have downloaded Heaven and Earth Designs charts to your computer, you will notice the setup for this is exactly the same. All the pages are all there. 
even those of you that have purchased the paper patterns, you also receive all this. So the, here is the actual chart. And what I love the most about the Good Reader app is the ability to do this. You can pinch and zoom and make it as big as you like. How awesome is that? Great for tight eyes. Okay, so once you have your chart visible, there's really only two things you need to, look, to know is the short press and the long press. Each item will um, bring up a different menu for you. So by doing a short press on a symbol, we have our main menu on the side with all these different options. Now, first of all, I'll show you what I use and then I'll show you the other things I have found. After a little while, as you can see, that will disappear. So we'll just short press and I click on the highlight, the ABC, which has a highlight above it. The first thing that it will ask you is whether you want to create another copy. I recommend doing this because you can then make any alterations to this particular copy and you will still have your original and you won't need to upload it again through Dropbox or however you want to do it. Um, and it's, that's also very handy for charts that have backstitching so that you can highlight your chart as much as you need to and then when it's time to backstitch you can go back to your original chart which has been untouched and you can easily see your backstitching. So we'll say yes for that. This is now my altered copy. Now when I work my cross stitches and on the Heaven and Earth designs, as you all know, I use the parking technique and I highlight the stitches that I have stitched as I go. So for an example, I click on, sorry, click on the colour button there and you can choose whatever colour you want. These are the most recently used colours that I have used. But if you click on other colour, you can see along the bottom there are all the colours that I have used in the past and you can also use that to alter the colours or click anywhere within here. So it's totally up to you, you can create your own little rainbow effect. So I'm going to show you the green which is my favourite colour at the moment. So just pretending that I have uh, stitched this chart, I'm going to show you how easy it is to highlight the chart. I'll do it a little bit larger so that you can see. So it's like playing online bingo, I think. Easy as dabbing the squares just like that. I like the way it fills the entire square. I found with other apps, it only um, highlighted a portion of the square and it, it just didn't, I was still having trouble following it. You can also click and drag in a line across only you can't go down as you can see that happens but it's really easy to erase a mistake for that I can just say undo to erase a past mistake you just do a short click and the option for delete will come up you press delete really delete and then it's gone now, as I said, I highlight my charts this way. So I just have to go back into that again. So, pretending I have stitched all this. And to move it, you can see it's just two fingers and you can move it up and down. And when I park my threads, I park in a completely different colour, so I can tell what's stitched and what is parked. Now to change the colour, I can't just go in and press this and change the colour, because this will happen. Everything I last did has then changed. So what you need to do is press the highlight button again, and then the highlight tab, and then I press on the colour, change the colour and then I park it there and then I go back, change it, back on there, change it and then I can go like that. It's all pretty easy. So that's the highlight button. There are other options. Um, if you like to 
make a note of an area that you're currently stitching and you want to sort of make that stand, stand out from everything else. Again, a short click. We can, you have an option of um, a square and you can click anywhere that you want it to go. And you say done and then we can move it. So click inside the square, the option of moving it. And I've, by clicking in the bottom, or in, sorry, by clicking in any of the corners, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. Clicking again, we can move it. So you can move it anywhere around your page. By the way, you don't have to use a stylus, you can use your pen as you just saw me do. Uh, sorry, you can use your finger. <laughs> um, other options you have is you can change the colour. Again, you can use the full rainbow effect. You can change the opacity. So if you want to be able to see your stitches behind that work so it's not hiding them, you can change it down so you can easily see behind them. Clicking on it again. You can change how thick the line is. At the moment it's on three, we can change it to nine. We can change it to one. So that's a really, really great. Um, I've actually got that on large at the moment as well. You can change it to small. So that's a really fun um, thing to have. So we'll get rid of that for now. Delete. Okay, so the other one is a circle. Same deal. We can make it bigger. We can move it around. Oops. As you can see, I'm still learning with this one too. Change colour change the opacity, everything that we did with the square we can do with this one as well. I'll move on because there's more. There is an arrow. So if you want to, maybe you're a stitcher that likes to stitch by colour and um, you want to make note of a colour that you don't want to forget to stitch. You can put a little big or a little arrow there to mark, to remind you on your pattern. Again, you can change the colours, you can change the thickness, you can move it around, you can change the opacity. Lots and lots and lots of options. Get rid of that. And the other one is the line. If you want to highlight a line for whatever reason, you can make it really thick, you can make it really dark, you can change the colour. So he heaps of options. Okay, what else do I have to show you? Um, okay, there's also the pen option. This is the pen here, the pen tool, and you can draw. So if you want to write yourself a note, if you want to draw a circle, um, instead of messing around with the other thing, you can do that. You can change the thickness of your line. You can change the color. And again, I'll go back to this one so you can see it better. You can change the opacity so that you can still read your chart. You can always undo that straight away if you did something wrong or to get rid of it, click on it and then press delete. And there it goes. Okay, um, I think that pretty much shows that. I wanna show you a different pattern. So to get back to the main screen, we need the main menu option. And it keeps all the charts that you've opened. As you can see, this is my chart that I've been changing. 
and that's the unchanged chart. So it keeps them there until you click out of them, just like the Windows box on the computer. Um, the other one I want to show you is the black work journey chart because that is a little bit different. That one won't allow me to use the highlight button to mark it off. So this is where I'm at. Oh, get off there. This is the chart. All the little red dots are the areas that I have stitched. And I have done that using the pen tool. So main menu and the pen. And the only difference with using the pen tool as opposed to using the highlight tool, the highlight tool will highlight the entire square, whereas the pen tool will only highlight or mark where you dab. So for instance, you can dab in the middle of a square if you wish. You can dab in the square. Um, it's up to you. So that's the only way I could mark on this particular type of chart. So I think that's all I have to show you. If you have any questions regarding this app, um, please leave a comment. I will do my absolute best to, to um, answer your questions. As I said, I've still messing around with this app myself but I can see it has um, it's very versatile and it's really great for cross stitching and it means I don't have to use my highlighters anymore if any of you have had accidents with highlighters dropping on your fabric you will know how devastating that feeling can be so um, this is great also great if you've got little kids and you know you don't want them messing around with highlighters as well so I highly recommend this app so again, please feel free to comment and uh, thank you for all your support with the videos and uh, look forward to speaking to you all again soon. Bye for now.